Oi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I did that. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. This is another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. That's right. I am your host, Old Heart. I'm going to tell you, thank you. Uh, this is an album of the week edition of Coffee and Contemplation. That's right. Uh, you know, one of those boring podcasts where I talk to you about an album you may or may not have listened to because I definitely did not tell you about this in advance. It was sort of a spur of the moment thing, and this is definitely an album that I listen to pretty frequently. So, you know, it means it's a good album. At least if you have the same taste as I do, and that taste is good. Good taste. So, that being said, today we're talking about Rush's first album, Rush. That's right. Rush by Rush. Thank you. Thank you to the Alive Studio audience here at Old Heart Studios. So what? Oh. <laughs> Rush is the debut studio album by Canadian rock band you guessed it, Rush, released on March 1st, 1974 by the band's own label Moon Records in Canada and by Mercury Records in the United States and internationally. Their first release shows much of the hard rock sound, hard rock, typical of many of the popular rock bands emerging earlier in the decade. Rush were fans of, uh, Rush were fans of bands like Led Zeppelin and Cream and blah, 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 blah. That's right. Uh, so... See? March 1st, 1974. What else happened on March 1st, 1974? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. If you can think of something, let me know. Um, either way, like, I was just real watching the, this documentary. Uh, it was a documentary about Rush called Rush. <laughs> and in the documentary uh, about Rush called Rush, they talked about the album Rush, where <laughs> they were talking, uh, the, the what was the name of the drummer? It's like Josh, John, original drummer John Rutsey performed all drum parts on the album. Yeah, so he performed all the drum parts on the album, but when they finally got picked up and were like gearing up to go on a tour, he had some health related issues uh, related to like his diabetes and they decided to try and have him re- uh, replaced. And that gave birth to Neil Peart later joining the band of Rush, um, which obviously was probably the right direction. No offense to John because he's drumming on this album. It's actually really, really fucking dope. I don't mind it that is the swear jar once again all the money in the swear jar comes from my pocket and goes right back into my pocket (laughs) it's the circle of life that's right laugh laugh about the awful cruel circle that is uh anyway like i said original drummer john rutsey performed all the drum parts on the album but was unable to go on tour that is not i don't think diabetes is a laughing matter okay so uh either way um, Rusty contributed to the album's lyrics as well, but was but never submitted the work to the other members of the band. The lyrics were instead entirely composed by Lee and Leifson themselves. Rusty was soon replaced by Neil Peart, who remained the band's drummer as well. And Neil Peart almost did not try out for Rush. Like they they personally sought him out, and not personally, but they did seek him out because they heard you know like. The Neil Peart was the tits McGee, and the, like he almost didn't try out because he was working at like a part store, like a fucking auto part store or something like that, uh, with his with his pops, and that would have been one of the most devastating things to music in a very very long time. 
Uh, but anyway, the album. Originally, the recording sessions were produced by Dave Stock at Eastern St Sound Studios in Toronto. They were scheduled late at night during the dead time in studios because of the band's low budget and the rates during this period were the cheapest. I 100% sympathize with that. Every album I've recorded has been either like on the super, super cheap or completely DIY. Completely DIY. Oh god. Uh, Stock had also worked on the band's debut single, Dave Stock had also worked on the band's debut single, which was a cover of Buddy Holly's Not Fade Away. So, you know, they kind of had a rapport, which is always good. You don't really want to go into the studio for the first time with uh, somebody that you don't know mixing your album. It's just, it's just a very uncomfortable feeling. However, uh, it seems like Rush were unhappy with the quality of their first sessions. Um, so they ended up, they moved to the Toronto Sound Studios and produced the next sessions themselves while achieving a significant improvement. Interesting. Uh, some of the tracks on the album, like, my favorite track on the album is definitely number three, Take a Friend, which that was that clip at the beginning, it was from Take a Friend. Uh, but, shoot, shout out, let's see, shout outs on Instagram to Phil Columns, to Jamie B. Jammin, to Yellow Teeth, to Uncaged, to Stray Dog, to Casserole, to All of My Wood, to Mooner Six. Shout out to Harrison Hannon, who has a lot of big stuff coming up. Uh, actually, let me talk about that for a second. Give me that paper here. Harrison Hannon over in Olympia, Washington. Uh, go look him up on Instagram. Uh, at Harrison Hannon. He's been putting together a string of shows coming up this month for February to celebrate Black History Month. Uh, the first show kicks off actually February 5th. Uh, it's New Orleans night at, at the r, &R So uh, check him out. I'm going to post a picture of it on the Instagram a full lineup of all the shows that he's got going on. So if you live in town, get down there. And most of them are at the r, &R A couple are at the Hobbit Hole. Uh, yeah, a lot of jazz, a lot of good music's gonna happen this month. Um, and you can, you can thank, uh, Harrison Hannon for it. So give him a shout out. Follow his band at, uh, Monkflower on Instagram also. Um, anyway, back to Rush because we're talking about Rush and, you know, not like we're in a rush. We're just running out of time. <laughs> it happens. Uh, let's see. Uh, obviously, Getty Lee uh, did the lead vocals on the album and played the bass. That shouldn't be a shocker if you know Rush at all. Alex Leifson played guitar and did the backing vocals, which also shouldn't be a shock. And like I said, John Rusty is credited with the drums, percussion, and backing vocals on the album itself. Um, I don't really want to knock it, but like, I, I wonder how long it actually took Neil Peart to learn all of, of John's drum parts because I like Pert is just he, he's just a superior drummer and I don't mean that in a negative way it's just kind of fact John I'll say this John Rutsey's drumming is, is very reminiscent of like my drumming style or or the drumming style that I've tried to most kind of emulate I suppose in a lot of the music I've drummed on or been the drummer in but uh, I, I just, I, I wonder how long it took. I, I don't know. That's a question I need to find an answer to. Uh, let's see. Um, in July 2008, Rush discovered an old version of Working Man with an alternative guitar solo. They allowed the makers of the popular rhythm... That's not a bad thing. They allowed the makers of the popular rhythm game Rock Band... Ooh, the popular rhythm game Rock Band... <laughs> I feel like you have to be a fucking nincompoop to you know, like, play those games. I hate those games. I have to just, just go pick up a... If you want to play music so bad, just go pick up an instrument and learn how to play that rather than learn how to smash buttons in the correct order. <laughs> okay, rant done. Rant done. They allowed the makers of the popular rhythm game Rock Band to use the master tapes of the song uh, for the song's inclusion. So the version of the song known as Working Man was released as a downloadable song for the game in July 2020 July 22nd 2008 that's that's what I was trying to say not 22 22 either way okay so seriously this album is is great it's uh you couldn't have a more uh, powerful introduction album it's a, it, it, it make like <laughs> it makes you want to fucking play music I, I love it. 
Um, I've been jamming it a lot. I, there's only everybody I talk to. Every time I bring some, every time I bring Rush up in a conversation with somebody I think is into like older music, like older rock music, everybody snubs Rush, and I don't understand that. It's the most bizarre thing to me. I'm like, I've talked to like one person in Olympia that likes Rush. So if you like Rush, like shout out at, at me on, uh, you know, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let's connect. Let's talk about Rush. Uh, but anyway, like I said, this album is, is phenomenal. It's a, uh, I don't know. I was walking to work the other morning. I was walking down to the coffee shop so I could open it up. And that song, Take a Friend, that, the uh, it came on and for some reason i just i had the most emotional response i think i've i've had to a bit of music in a really long time it just reminded me of a friend that had, re- that had recently passed away and i don't know why it was like a combination of the fact that it's just such a driving like awesome song and the fact that it's just talking about you know like friendship <laughs> in a lot of ways and like you know the weight of it and I don't know it was like this weird gravitas situation where it just like all of a sudden I felt that weight or that at least the lack uh, the loss of that weight and cause you know some people are worth it you know some some people are worth taking on extra weight for it seems like and uh, anyway so I had this really like just emotional response there's there's super cold out and there's you know some little crocodile tears running down running down old cheek and uh i don't know it was just i was grateful for it that was the thing like i just in the moment i remember that like it was really just a powerful way of emotion and then all of a sudden i just remember feeling grateful for uh having that emotion um or at least having the opportunity to think of that person in that moment i don't know it was it, it was it was great so I, I guess i just want to thank rush for that uh shout out to rush thank you um either way yeah this has been another episode of coffee and contemplation like i said this is the album of the week edition so uh you know stay tuned um, again, if you live in town, if you live in Olympia, Washington, uh, shout out to Harrison Hannon. Look at, um, uh, and shout out to the R to the Rhythm and Right. Look at their boards, see what shows they got coming up. It's, uh, February, it's Black History Month, and they're going to be showcasing uh, a lot of good music down there throughout their, their month and, uh, all throughout town. So, Harrison Hannon's got some shows put together. So, like I said, good music, good music. Good music is always needed, it's always wanted, it uh, makes the soul feel a little better. And that's why I do these Album of the Week podcasts, too. So, either way, go out there and ripen up your coconut as best you can. Use your brain for good, because that's what you gotta use it for. And, you know, do what they say. Keep your stick on the ice.